In this test, we're going to look at the nitrate reduction test, and this is day one, the setup, and this is activity 5-8. So the purpose of the nitrate reduction test is to determine whether bacteria can use nitrate, NO3 minus, as the final electron acceptor during anaerobic respiration. And so when we did our oxidase test, the oxidase test, remember, was looking at if oxygen is used as the final electron acceptor during aerobic respiration. And so now we're switching gears to anaerobic respiration where oxygen is not the final electron acceptor. And in this test, we are looking at if nitrate can be the final electron acceptor. So this experiment would be done in groups of four and you would use a, le a loop to inoculate a nitrate broth. These are broths that have a durum tube in it, which tells you that there is a part of this experiment that is looking for the production of gas. And so there are three tubes that we would incubate. You would have one that has Pseudomonas aeruginosa, you would have one that has E. coli, and you would have one that has Staphylococcus saprophyticus. And so each bacteria would be inoculated into a nitrate broth. And then the nitrate broths would be put in the incubator and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. And then we would do our readout. And so I have a video demonstrating the setup and how we would inoculate these broths. So in this experiment, we are going to do our nitrate reduction test. And so there are three organisms that we would test for this experiment. We would test, one of them would be E. coli. That's the one that I'm gonna demonstrate the technique for the setup. But basically what we're doing in this test is we wanna know, do bacteria use nitrate, NO3 minus, as the final electron acceptor during anaerobic respiration? And so I have my nitrate broth, and notice that in my nitrate broth, you can see a little glass tube in there. You might recall that those little glass tubes are called durum tubes. And the Durham tube, remember, is to detect the production of gas. So we will see if gas is produced during this reaction. So here is my sterile nitrate broth. I would label this tube. It's a broth, so I'm going to inoculate with my loop. So I'm going to flame sterilize my loop. going to let it cool. When I inoculate this tube, I want to make sure that I don't disrupt the derm tube. I don't want to knock the derm tube and make it float. So I have to be careful when I inoculate this that I don't mess with the derm tube. So here's my tube that has my slant, that has my bacteria on it. I'm going to flame. I'm going to go in. I'm gonna pick up some bacteria, flame it, cap back on. Then I'm gonna inoculate my nitrate broth, flame it, add it to the tube, but be gentle not to disrupt your durum tube, flame it, cap, and then flame sterilize my loop. And then I would be ready to move on to my next tube. And so I would end up having three tubes. And once I have inoculated all three organisms, then I would take these and I would put them in the incubator to do the readout after 48 hours. And so that is our setup for our nitrate reduction test. So now we're going to look at day two and talk about the readout for our nitrate reduction test. So again, the purpose of this test is to determine whether bacteria can use nitrate, NO3 minus, as the final electron acceptor during anaerobic respiration. And so again, remember when we talked about our oxidase test, we were seeing if oxygen could be used as the final electron acceptor. But during anaerobic respiration, oxygen is not the final electron acceptor. An example of a final electron acceptor in anaerobic respiration would be nitrate. And so we are trying to determine if nitrate can be the final electron acceptor during anaerobic respiration. So when we look at our nitrate reduction test, we have our substrate, and our substrate is going to be our nitrate. 
and nitrate is in the media. It's in our broth, and so this is our substrate. And so when we talk about our nitrate reduction test, we need to review about our redox reactions. And so you might recall that I told you about oil rig. So oxidation is a loss of electrons. And remember I said you could follow that by a loss of hydrogen. You can also look at oxidation as a gain of oxygen. So oxidize gains oxygen. And so if you see the number of oxygens increasing, that would be an oxidation. Reduction, remember, is a gain of electrons or a loss of oxygen. So they're inversely related, right? So if we gain electrons, we lose oxygen. So if we look at our redox reaction for our nitrate reduction test, notice that my substrate is nitrate. And my enzyme in this case that we're testing, the enzyme is called nitrate reductase. This is an endoenzyme. It's inside the cell. Just like when we looked at oxidase, oxidase was also a endoenzyme. Nitrate reduction is an endoenzyme as well. And it's going to become reduced, nitrate is gonna become reduced, meaning it gains electrons, because it's gaining electrons from the electron transport chain. It's what's going to pull the electrons from the electron transport chain, and so nitrate becomes reduced, and it forms what's called nitrite. So notice that there's an I here instead. Nitrite is our product, NO2 minus. Notice that it lost an oxygen. This is a reduction. So nitrate is being reduced to nitrite. So nitrite is gonna be our product, and this is going to be detected by our reagents in this test, which will be our reagents A and B, which we will talk about in a minute. Now, some organisms will stop, they will reduce nitrate to nitrite, and that will be your final product. However, other organisms will do what's called a full reduction. They will reduce nitrate fully meaning they're not gonna stop at nitrite, they will continue to reduce that. One type of full reduction is what's referred to as ammonification. And during ammonification, the product is gonna be ammonium, NH4+. Notice going from nitrite to ammonium is both losing oxygen and gaining hydrogen. Notice that's why this is a reduction. So this is gonna be a reduction, and that's gonna produce ammonium. That's one option. So some bacteria will do ammonification. They will pr produce ammonium as their product. Other bacteria will do a process called denitrification. And so they will reduce nitrite to nitric oxide, to nitrous oxide, and molecular nitrogen. Don't worry about these redox numbers. Don't worry about that, okay? Just know that nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, and molecular nitrogen, these are all nitrogenous gases. They're all gases. They're going to be released as these nitrogenous gas. And so we call this denitrification because it's the loss of biologically available nitrogen. That form of nitrogen is gonna be released as gas and is gonna be removed from the system. So let's talk about how our readout works. So we inoculated our tubes, we incubated them for 48 hours at 37 degrees, and so when we take our tubes out, they start out broth colored. So what we need to do to those tubes, we will need to add a reagent that will detect the presence of nitrite. So we will add five drops of reagent A, and five drops of reagent B. And so that will be added to all three tubes. Now, reagents A and B detect the presence of nitrite, and if nitrite is present, it will turn red. So if we add reagents A and B, and the tube does not turn red, what that tells us is that no nitrite is present, right? There's no nitrite present in the broth, which is why it did not turn red. 
Now, in terms of why there's no nitrite in the broth, there are two reasons why we might not have nitrite. One could be that bacteria don't use nitrate at all, meaning they don't reduce nitrate to nitrite. So they're not able to use nitrate as their final electron acceptor. Reason number two could be that bacteria fully reduce nitrate, meaning they've already reduced it to nitrate, to nitrite, and then they reduced it past nitrite, meaning they either reduced it to ammonium or they reduced it to the nitrogenous gas. And so that's why we wouldn't detect nitrite because it's not nitrite in the media anymore. It's been reduced past that. So those are our two possibilities. They could be clear because bacteria don't use nitrate, or reason two, bacteria fully reduce nitrate. They reduce it past nitrite, and that's why no nitrite is detected. Now, if the tube turns red after the addition of reagents A and B, that would tell us that nitrite is present. So if we add reagents A and B and the tube turns red, that tells us that nitrite is present because remember reagents A and B detect nitrite. So if it's red, nitrite is present, which is going to be positive for nitrate reduction. That's a positive. Bacteria were able to reduce nitrate to nitrite. So that's a positive. So that would be one way we can have a positive. Now, back to this side where we don't get red after reagents A and B are added. Remember that there are two possibilities. One, bacteria don't reduce nitrate at all. Or two, bacteria fully reduce nitrate. So we need a way to distinguish between these possibilities, right? Because they're totally different possibilities. One is that nitrate is not reduced and the other one is that nitrate is reduced, but it's reduced fully. So to distinguish between those two possibilities, we would add zinc to any tube that is not red. The tube that's red is done. That's already positive. But any tube that is not red, we will add zinc to it. Now, the reason that we add zinc is that zinc will reduce any nitrate in the broth to nitrite, meaning that if bacteria did not reduce nitrate, if it didn't reduce the nitrate, the nitrate is still in the media, and if you add zinc, the zinc will reduce nitrate left in the media to produce nitrite. Remember that reagents A and B are already added in those tubes. They will detect the nitrite that is being produced by the zinc. So if we add zinc and the tube turns red, if we add zinc and the tube turns red, that means that now nitrite is present because again, reagents A and B are already in the tube and if we add zinc, the zinc is gonna reduce the nitrate in the media to produce nitrite and that nitrite will now interact with reagents A and B and if nitrate was still in the media, that is negative for nitrate reduction. Nitrate is still in the media. The zinc reduced it to nitrite, which means that that's our negative. Bacteria did not reduce the nitrate at all. The nitrate was still in the media and the zinc reduced it artificially. Now, if, if we add zinc and it still stays broth colored, that means that in that case, there's no nitrite present, right? No nitrite present. And so what that means is that there's no nitrate left in the media because if there was, the zinc would have reduced it to nitrite. But if it stays clear, that means that the nitrate has been fully reduced. There's no more nitrate in the broth. There's also not nitrite. What that means is that it was reduced past that. So that's a positive for nitrate reduction. So clear after the addition of zinc is still a positive, but it's a full reduction, meaning it was fully reduced past the nitrite. So 
Remember that when we talked about full reduction, that there were two possibilities. One would be ammonification, and one would be denitrification. And so the way that we distinguish between those possibilities is that we look for gas in the Durham tube. Because which of those two processes would you expect to see gas in the Durham tube? And the answer is you would expect to see gas in the Durham tube if it was denitrification. And so no gas would be ammonification. If no gas is produced, that means that that is ammonification. So ammonium was produced in that tube. If there is gas in the Durham tube, that is going to be denitrification. Bacteria reduced the nitrate fully and produced the nitrogen gases. So nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, nitrogen gas, and two gas, different gases were produced during denitrification. So I know this slide looks very busy, but just walk yourself through it. If after reagents A and B, it turns red, that means that nitrite is present, and that is gonna be a positive for nitrate reduction because reagents A and B are going to detect nitrite. If we add reagents A and B and it is not red, that tells us that in that media, there is no nitrite. And if there is no nitrite, remember there are two possibilities. One could be that bacteria don't use nitrate at all, meaning the nitrate is still in the media, or two, bacteria fully reduce the nitrate, meaning they have reduced it past nitrite. And so to distinguish between those possibilities, that's why we add zinc. Zinc is a reducing agent. It will reduce nitrate to nitrite. So it'll reduce nitrate to nitrite. And so if there is still nitrate in the broth, the zinc would reduce it to nitrite and the tube would turn red because the nitrite would react with the reagents A and B that are already in the tube. If we add zinc and it stays colorless, meaning it's broth colored, what that tells us is that in that case, there still is not nitrite in the media and no nitrite means that there was also no nitrate left in the broth because if nitrate was there, it would have been reduced to nitrite, but it wasn't, which means that that's positive for nitrate reduction, but it's a full reduction. It was reduced past the nitrite. And so then we would look at gas in the Durham tube to distinguish between ammonification and denitrification. And so if we see gas, it was denitrification. If we get no gas, it's ammonification. And so this is an overview of our nitrate reduction test. So when we look at our nitrate reduction test, this is just showing you zinc is a reducing agent. And so in place of this nitrate reductase, you could replace that and that could be zinc. So that any nitrate that was still in the media, when you add zinc, the zinc would reduce the nitrate to the nitrite and then the nitrite would react with the reagents A and B in the media, and if it turns red, that tells us that bacteria don't use nitrate. Because if we get red after zinc, that means that nitrate was still in the media. Bacteria did not use the nitrate, the zinc reduced it to nitrite. If it remains clear after zinc, that is going to be your full reduction of nitrate, meaning it was fully reduced. It was reduced past the nitrite. If we have no gas in the Durham tube, that tells us it was ammonification because it produced ammonium, which is not a gas. If we see gas in the Durham tube, that is our denitrification. And that is because we produce nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, and molecular nitrogen all of which are gases and would be produced and detected in the Durham tube. So this is just showing you 
what the steps would be for the readout. So you would need to gently vortex the tubes to see if the bacteria grew. And then you would add reagents A and B, five drops to all of the tubes. You don't wanna get the reagents on your hand and therefore you just add it to the rack directly. If we add, notice this one says add eight drops. Ours, we do only five drops. So five drops of reagent A, five drops of reagent B. And so if it turns red after the addition of reagents A and B, that means that nitrite is present. That's why it turns red. And if nitrite was present, that is positive for reduction. If the tube is not red after we add reagents A and B, Remember that there's two possibilities. One, bacteria did not reduce nitrate at all, and nitrate is still in the media. Or two, bacteria fully reduced the nitrate. And so all the tubes that are not red would have zinc added to them. All the tubes that are not red would add zinc. If it turns red after the addition of zinc, that tells us that nitrate is still in the media, nitrate is still in the media, the zinc reduced it to nitrite. And if zinc reduced it to nitrite, then that means that that is a negative. Bacteria did not reduce the nitrate to nitrite, the zinc did. If it is still clear, if it's still colorless after the addition of zinc, that is positive for full reduction because we still don't have nitrite which means that there is no nitrate in the media. It was fully reduced. And so I have a video showing you how this readout is done. So in this experiment, now we are going to do our readout for our nitrate reduction test. And so what I have is I have my three bacteria that have grown. So I have E. coli. So notice that there's some turbidity. So if I vortex carefully, there's turbidity in there. There's no gas in the derm tube. We have our staph saprophyticus, turbidity, but no gas in the derm tube. And unfortunately for our demonstration purposes, Pseudomonas aeruginosa did not grow. Normally this would have growth and it would have gas in the derm tube. So I'm still gonna go through the steps with it, but be aware that it's gonna look a little different in real life. So this is our third one. So I have my three organisms. So what I need to do is I need to start by adding my reagent A and my nitrate reagent B. These together are going to detect if nitrate was reduced. They will detect the product of nitrite. If nitrite is present, this is gonna turn red. So I vortex. And I'm just going to add five drops of reagent A. And I'm gonna do the same for all three. Now, this has a very strong vinegar smell you don't wanna hold your tubes in your hand when you do this in case you get the drops on you. It's better to just leave them in the rack while you add the drops. So now I'm gonna add my reagent B and it's five drops of reagent B. All right, so I added my reagents A and my reagents B. Let me get a chem wipe. I got a little bit of a drop on the lid. All right, so notice for E. coli, I can already see the red forming. So what that means is that reagents A and B will detect the presence of nitrite. So in the broth was originally nitrate, and if nitrate was reduced to nitrite, the reagents A and B would detect that and turn red. So for my E. coli, it is positive for nitrate reduction. So it's red, 
So we know that one's positive. Now, for my Staph saprophyticus, notice that the tube is not red, nor is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. We don't expect this one to be red either. So we have two tubes that are not red. So when this experiment, after we add reagents A and B, we are not done because there are two possibilities for why this did not turn red. One reason would be that nitrate was not reduced, meaning there's still nitrate in the media and that nitrate could be reduced by an artificial means, meaning zinc, to produce nitrate. So one possibility is that nitrate was not reduced at all. Possibility number two was that nitrate was reduced to nitrite, but then it was reduced further. And there are two possibilities for that. One is referred to as ammonification. Ammonification, you're not gonna have gas in the Durham tube. And denitrification is going to produce nit uh, nitrogen gases, and that would have gas in the Durham tube. So the two possibilities are nitrate is not reduced at all, or nitrate is fully reduced, meaning it's already gone past nitrite, which is why we don't detect nitrite, and it's gone past that point, and it's gone to either ammonium or nitrogen gases. So we need a way to distinguish between those two possibilities. So the way that that's gonna be done is we are going to use zinc. Zinc is a reducing agent. What this will do is when we add zinc to the tubes, if nitrate is still in the broth, so if nitrate is still there and I add zinc, the zinc is gonna reduce any nitrate in the broth to form nitrite. And if the zinc reduces it to form nitrite, we already have reagents A and B in this tube. And so it's gonna turn red. So if it turns red after the addition of zinc, that is going to be a negative. Because what that tells us is that the nitrate was still in the broth and that the zinc reduced the nitrate to nitrite. So that means that the nitrate was not reduced. The nitrate was originally in the broth and the bacteria did not reduce it. The zinc reduced it, but the bacteria did not. If I add zinc and it still stays clear, it does not turn red, then our conclusion would be that it is fully reduced. Meaning there's still no nitrate in the broth because if nitrate was still in the broth, the zinc would reduce it to nitrite and it would turn red. So there's still no nitrate in the broth. There was no nitrite. So it tells us that it was fully reduced. So it was reduced past the form of nitrate. And then we would look at gas in the Durham tube to see if it's denitrification or ammonification. So now I'm gonna add my zinc and I don't add it to the tube that's already red. The E. coli is already done. We already know that it reduced the nitrate to nitrite. So that tube's done. We don't need to do anything else with that. But to the two tubes that are not red, I need to add zinc. So I'm just gonna use this little scooper and I just need a small amount of zinc. And I add it and then I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the second tube. Okay, I'm done with my zinc. So now I can just gently vortex and sometimes this takes a minute for it to show up. So we'll do the same thing for the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So you can see for the Staph saprophyticus, you can see the tube is starting to turn pink, it's starting to turn red. That's because the nitrate was still in the media. 
the zinc is now reducing it to nitrite, and the nitrite that's now forming is reacting with the reagents A and B that were already in there. So what that tells us is after the addition of zinc, if it is red after the addition of zinc, that's a negative. That means that the nitrate was not reduced, the nitrate was still in the media, and the zinc reduced it to nitrite. Now, notice for Pseudomonas, this one is turning red. Normally, that is not the case. Normally, this, if we did this experiment with Pseudomonas, it would stay clear throughout, meaning it won't turn red, and there would be gas in the Durham tube. But because Pseudomonas did not grow, this is, you can treat this like an uninoculated control. Because Pseudomonas did not grow in this tube, notice that the broth is turning pink. Because again, the nitrate is still in the media and the zinc is reducing the nitrate to nitrite. So if you did this experiment with an uninoculated tube, meaning one that had no bacteria, you would get the same result. This is essentially an uninoculated um, two. It did not grow bacteria and therefore this is why you see this. But normally Pseudomonas would be clear throughout, which means if it's clear throughout, that means that the nitrate, um, the nitrate was fully reduced because it still didn't, didn't detect nitrite. So our results would be E. coli is positive for nitrate reduction. It reduced nitrate to nitrite. Our staph saprophyticus would be negative for nitrate reduction. It does not reduce it at all, meaning that instead, when we added reagents A and B, we did not get a color change. But when we added zinc, it turned red because the zinc reduced the nitrate still in the media and it formed nitrite and that means that the nitrate was still in the media. So Staph saprophyticus would be our negative. And again, normally for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, this tube would be clear throughout and it would have a gas bubble in the Durham tube. And so this tube would be positive for full reduction and it would be denitrification because there would be gas in the Durham tube. And so this would be how we do our readout for our nitrate reduction. So now let's look at the results of our experiment and talk about what the different results mean. If we were to give you this on a lab practical, we would have to tell you what was added to the tube. Because notice that E. coli and Staph saprophyticus are both red, but the interpretation is very different depending on what reagents were added. So for example, if I look at this table, here's E. coli, and it says after the addition of reagents A and B, it was red but no zinc was added. So if it turns red after the addition of reagents A and B, what that means is that reagents A and B detected nitrite and therefore it is positive for nitrate reduction, right? E. coli reduced the nitrate to nitrite and the nitrite would react with the reagents A and B and it turned red. Now. This chart shows us that Staph saprophyticus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa were both clear after the additions of reagents A and B. And so remember that if they're both clear, there are two possible explanations. One, that the bacteria did not reduce the nitrate at all, meaning nitrate is still in the media. Or option two, bacteria fully reduced the nitrate to nitrite and then past nitrite, which is why there's still no nitrite present. So to the two tubes that were not red after reagents A and B, so for Staph saprophyticus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, zinc was added to the tube. And when zinc was added to the tube, the Staph saprophyticus turns red and the Pseudomonas aeruginosa stays clear. Now be aware in the video that I showed you, the Pseudomonas turned red, but again, that was because the bacteria did not grow. This is the actual result. What you're seeing on the slide is what that result should look like. So Staph saprophyticus turns red after the addition of zinc. Pseudomonas aeruginosa does not. So for Staph saprophyticus, it turned red, 
which means that now nitrite is present in the media, right? Now we have nitrite. And what that means is that for Staph saprophyticus, it did not reduce nitrate to nitrite. The zinc reduced the nitrate in the broth and produced nitrite. And that's why it turned red. So if the nitrate is still in the broth, that is negative for nitrate reduction. The bacteria did not reduce the nitrate. The zinc reduced it to nitrite, but the bacteria did not. And then lastly, we have our Pseudomonas aeruginosa, where it is still colorless after the addition of zinc. So that means that we still do not have nitrite in the tube, which means that it was fully reduced. So that would be positive for full reduction. Now, notice that if we look in the Durham tube, we have this gas in the Durham tube. That gas are those nitrogen gases. Could be nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, molecular nitrogen, but basically the gas in the Durham tube tells us that it's denitrification. That that bacteria fully reduced nitrate, past nitrite, and it reduced it to nitrogen gases. That would be the product in that tube. That tube would have nitrogen gases. And so this would be our readout for our nitrate reduction. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna show you the question sets and some of the questions so that you can work on answering those before our discussion. So before our discussion, I would like you guys to attempt to answer some of the questions from the question sets. So question number 50 says, explain thoroughly each of the following results in the experiment. So part A says, after incubation, turbid nitrate broths turn red when reagents A and B are added. And so you want to be thorough. Do not just say, I'll help you with A. Don't, don't just say that's positive. You don't want to say that. You need to be more specific. If it turned red after reagents A and B are added, that is positive for nitrate reduction. And it turned red because bacteria reduced nitrate to nitrite and reagents A and B detected nitrite. So be very specific. So for the rest of these, you're gonna do the same thing. After incubation, turbid nitrate broth does not turn red when reagents A and B are added. What does that tell you? What are the possibilities for why it did not turn red? A turbid tube that did not turn red when reagents A and B were added turns red when zinc is added. A turbid tube that does not turn red when reagents A and B were added does not turn red when zinc is added. And notice there's no mention of gas in a Durham tube. And then E, there is gas in the Durham tube after incubation with a non-fermenting organism. Now what that means, why we're saying non-fermenting, meaning that it's not, that gas is not due to the fermentation of sugar, for example. It's actually due to gas from the nitrate reduction pathway. Now, the other questions I want you to work on before is questions 51 to 53. 51 says, what result should an uninoculated control tube, meaning there's no bacteria added to it, what result would you get with an uninoculated control tube when reagents A and B are added and why? So think about it. In the media is nitrate. If there's no bacteria and you add reagents A and B, do you expect it to be red or colorless and why? 52, what results should the uninoculated control tube give when only zinc is added, meaning no reagents A and B, only zinc is added, and why? And then 53, what results should the uninoculated control tube give when reagents A and B and zinc are added, and why? So again, what color would that be and why? And so explain those thoroughly, and then we will discuss those in our lab Zoom.